performance and we're here with the model 81 standard beam plow this is going to use the same foot or mo board bottom whatever you want to call it as like the compact or subcompact plow uses the uh, 19 plow uh, the main difference is from from where the mo board is to the top of your beam is a lot taller this is for a standard size tractor so you've got a lot more distance between here and here it is the same mo board the uh, the plows built for a heavier tractor We've added the coulter feature here, so it's gonna cut the vines or the grass before that the uh, beam can get to it and it wads up. This plow is shear bolt protected, so if you hit a large rock or something under the ground, it's actually gonna shear this bolt and trip the plow back then you're just going to have to replace this one bolt here, but you won't be tearing anything up. Since this tractor has the R4 tires on it, which is what most compact tractors are coming out with now, that's what we're using. We would rather have the smaller, narrow agriculture tires, but this is what we're going to work with. You can adjust these U-bolts right here and slide the whole A-frame of the plow over to adjust it to where you're running in your furrow straight. Now, a couple things to know, if you'll notice, the pin on this side, is lower than the pin on this side and so once you've made your, fur, your first furrow and you're running in the furrow you're going to adjust your side link right here to make your plow run level from left to right and then we'll be adjusting this top link to, to make the plow run level so it's not trying to pull down and dip or run up and not want to stay in the ground. So we're not sure how any of these adjustments are right right now, but after just a few feet we'll be able to figure it out, make a few adjustments and uh, get it all right. All right, pull up peanut and make our first fur and we'll make some adjustments. You really have to make a first complete run to get your levelness right because once you start running in the fur, things are going to change. All right, let me put the top link down a little bit. So, so right now it's not even really wanting to go in the ground right because it's pitched up too much. So I'm gonna shorten this top link, make the bottom angle down a little more. All right, let's give that a try, Pinnett. So now it's wanting to go in the ground. And if you'll notice, the plow's running a little bit, leaning to the left, but once his tires are in this furrow, he's gonna be more le he's gonna be a lot more level. So we'll probably have to adjust it a little bit the other way on the next pass to get it level. Alright, so. We're, it's off just a little bit. Let's see. I'm, I'm going to come up on this side here just a little bit. And go back down and keep moving. All right. We'll try that and see how it is once he gets back going. So the plow's running almost perfectly flat from left to right. It's running straight. Could use just a hair difference, but it's just about perfect. It's plowing deep. The coulter's cutting all the weeds before it gets to it. Nothing's wrapping up around the beam, and that's what you want. What grass is left here is getting totally turned under. All you see now is dirt. good North Carolina red clay. This has been plowed before. We're going to take an extra run though and uh, just go an extra row or two over that hasn't been plowed so you can see the differences.
So it's plowing good and deep. Nothing's wadding up on the beam because it has the coulter attachment on it. If you're going to be plowing anything but an already plowed field, I always recommend the coulter. So a lot of people's biggest question is, do I want a single bottom or a double bottom? It seems like most people with even little tractors would like to use a double bottom plow. But the reality is for a garden, a single bottom plow just works a whole lot better if you're not doing a large area. Uh, that's a 50 horsepower Kubota tractor. It's actually pretty small for the horsepower it is. On our two bottom plow video that we did, you might want to look at it. And you can tell that even though this tractor has 50 horsepower, it still struggled a little bit to pull it. Now this ground was broken with that two bottom plow not long ago, so you're going to tell a big difference when we go from already broken ground to unbroken ground. But it takes a pretty pretty heavy tractor, doesn't have to be a lot of horsepower, but it takes a pretty heavy tractor with a large frame to do well with a two bottom plow. Horsepower is not that important, even an ADN Ford with 24 horsepower can pull a two bottom plow, but it weighs a thousand pounds more than this lightweight Kubota. So now we're getting over into the new ground where you can see it's definitely getting a little harder and starting to flake off more instead of just crumble. Now you're, you know your plow and your coulter are working together when you've got a good square cut edge like that. That coulter's cutting through all the roots, it's leaving it solid, leaving a good straight edge here, that's when you've got it right. 